James City County has really been shaped by past trends and where it is in the present is a product of many historical forces. This image is kind of a uh, visual timeline of the eras and, and uh, trends that James City County has been through from the colonial era to the future of uh, flying cars potentially. Um, and in many ways, the county is at a pivotal point right now in updating its comprehensive plan and the decisions it makes and, and the guidance that it sets in this comprehensive plan could really influence its fiscal future, its quality of life. Uh, and we want to kind of uh, set the stage here by looking a little bit at, at what the uh, county's statistics say today and what the forecasts are for the future. So one of the key issues really is growth. Uh, and growth is, is central to the discussion of a comprehensive plan. It's about the future. Um, and rapid growth, of course, creates a high demand for services, especially those big ones like roads and utilities that can outpace the ability to pay for them through the revenue stream. Uh, it's a balancing act. Too little growth makes it difficult to expand these services. But not only that, just to maintain the capital facilities we have now, schools, parks, et cetera, uh, we need a revenue stream to pay for the upkeep of those. And then, of course, too much growth, and in particular, residential growth, can create a high demand for services, but not enough of a revenue stream to pay for that demand. So let's look at some of the uh, facts and figures behind these issues. First of all, where's the county been? Uh, on the left, you see kind of a chart of the population growth in the county over the last 10 years or so. Uh, we are now at about 75,000, 76,000 people in the county, and that's been a fairly significant growth from just over 60,000 10 years ago. Essentially, the county has added over 1,200 people per year in the past 10 years. There's an image in the lower right of what that kind of growth looks like. Uh, essentially, you're adding one fairly sizable village or community every year in the past 10 years. Now, what about the future? What do the forecasts say? Well, uh, there are two primary uh, sources for forecasting future growth in uh, this area. One is the official state forecast for the county, the Weldon Cooper Center, and the other is the official regional forecast done by the uh, Planning District Commission in Hampton Roads. And you can see here on the right, they both project about 156% growth uh, in the next 20 years to 2040. You can see on the left kind of the growth projections. Um, and what this really means is roughly 1,200 to 1,300 people per year. Now, of course, the past is not a destiny, and we can certainly shape uh, some of how that growth occurs through policies like uh, we will put forth in, the, forth in the comprehensive plan. Of course, uh, with Virginia's kind of state enabling legislation, we cannot really fine tune exactly how much growth we want in the county. There, there are certain uh, rights and um, kind of uh, duties that the local government has, the state government, to allow growth uh, by right, but certainly a comprehensive plan process can shape the location and to some extent the pace of that growth. Now, we also wanted to share with you what citizens have said based on a 2019 survey that was done of a representative sample of about a thousand county residents. And in the survey, folks were asked about their opinions about development and growth issues. And you can see on the left here, uh, the three bars that uh, responses were too low, about right, or too high to these questions. So the takeaways here, residential development, uh, the majority of people said it was about right. A uh, slightly higher percentage of people said the office development um, rate was about right. Retail development, by contrast, most people said that that was too high, too much development uh, retail, more so than uh, about right. And then industrial development, uh, probably the strongest kind of uh, percentage of people said that it was about right. So uh, you can see kind of how the opinions range on the types of development. And then on the right are kind of opinions on development issues. 79% of people said developers should pay to offset 
pay fees to offset public costs. Similar percentage said farmland is more important than development. 75% said residential development was too fast. And about 59% said it's better instead to have small scale retail and offices in neighborhoods rather than this uh, residential development. Uh, we're also, in the survey, folks were asked about opinions on how to manage that growth. So uh, a large percentage, 98%, agreed that developers or builders should provide public amenities as part of their development. 94% uh, localized services should be in rural communities. 85% said we should develop this interconnected street system, uh, and so on. I, I'll just uh, kind of let you... Uh, read through some of the percentages, but some of the issues that people favored were lower taxes in agricultural and forest lands, reducing the number of lots for private for rural property, the greater variety or mix of housing types and prices. Uh, people believe that purchasing property rights, property development rights in rural areas was supported, and a greater mix of offices, stores, and restaurants within the residential areas. So just some uh, kind of opinions from the citizen survey. Um, now, again, looking at uh, comparing James City County against other communities in the region and in the state. So on the left are kind of where growth has been in comparison to other Virginia communities. You can see on the top left population growth, James City County ranks 11th in the state from 1998 to 2016 with a 12.9% rate of growth. On the employment growth, it was actually much stronger. It ranked fourth in the whole state in terms of employment growth. On the right is the future forecast. We're, we only did these on a the regional basis to kind of have apples to apples uh, comparisons for this time frame of 2015 to 2045. But you can see that James City County is projected to be the number one uh, in terms of population growth in the region and number two in terms of employment growth in the region. So takeaway here is that significant growth both in the past and in the future compared to peer communities for the county. And one of the important kind of uh, policy issues in terms of growth is how much growth uh, is kind of already accounted for in the development approvals. Uh, now James City County, as you may know, has something called a primary service area. It's an area where public water, sewer, and other kind of public services exist or are expected to exist in the future. It effectively serves as the, the boundary area in which growth is targeted to occur. And the staff uh, did, a, county staff did an assessment of the development potential in this primary service area. You can see the, the tables on the right the, the basic kind of takeaways here is that there are over 15,000 potential lots or units that could be developed in the county. About 11 of those, 11,000 of those are already zoned or approved lots that are currently vacant. And another 4,000 or, or so uh, you might call anticipated lots because they're designated by the comprehensive plan, even though they still need to be zoned and approved. So about 15,000 units that might be anticipated. Uh, on the right, you can also see how long it might take to absorb this uh, capacity, residential capacity, based on past rates of growth, anywhere from 14 to 38 years to uh, absorb that rate of growth. Um, again, this is uh, just estimates based on past trends. And then finally, in the lower right, the non-residential capacity, the commercial, industrial, et cetera, uh, this is just in terms of acres. There's about 3,800 acres undeveloped that could uh, accommodate non-residential growth in the primary service area. So uh, some potential for growth there in both residential and commercial. And again, some uh, broader trends. Uh, nationwide, the population is trending older, and James City County's population is first of all already older than the state or the region. You can see on the left that the average age is 45 and a half years compared to the Virginia and the region, and it's projected to get older. So 34% of the county's population is forecasted to be 65 or older in the next 20 years versus 
27% in the year 2020. So it's a, it's a trend towards an older population, and that's something to consider in this comprehensive plan, what are the needs of a population that ages like that. Um, another kind of national trend that, that uh, we don't have for the county necessarily, but this is um, remarkable in that household types with children are only 20% or projected to be only 20% of the population in this century and households without children, 80% uh, of those 28% would be single person households. So uh, it's, you know, the traditional planning kind of modulus of the, the, the family with children planning for them uh, really is a minority of the population and, and uh, households without children are, are the growing majority. And again, considering what kind of the needs uh, and forces that will play in the conference of plan with these trends. This is a little benchmarking of Jane City County to the rest of Virginia. Um, so the, the statistics here show that Jane City County is proportionally less diverse than the state, higher income, and higher education. You can see there the, the percentage on the left of uh, white versus other races is significantly higher in James City County. The income is a good bit higher than Virginia and the educational uh, rate, the percent of those people with bachelor's degrees or higher uh, is also um, greater than the state of Virginia. And finally, uh, housing affordability. This is an issue that has been uh, discussed quite a bit in the county. And this is an assessment that the staff did on the amount of income spent on housing in the county. Um, you see these bars here into three different categories based on uh, HUD categories for cost burden households. So 19% of the, the population of the county is severely cost burdened, paying more than 50% of its income for housing. 17% is paying between 30 and 50% of its income for housing. And 21% 20, is paying more than 30% of its income for housing. Again, something that uh, both in the citizen survey and in uh, prior conference of plans is an issue that, that is coming to the fore. So um, this is not so much a statistic, but an important consideration for economic development in the future. And this is a discussion really of the competitive economy. There have been quite a few studies, research done nationwide that say that the paradigm for economic development is changing. The old paradigm is basically provide low taxes and ample sites and, and uh, clear roads and the business and industry will come to your community. Um, nowadays, the paradigm is really shifted towards attracting an educated workforce. And what attracts that workforce is the quality of life features that are important. So the, the kind of uh, uh, logic here is create a great place that makes the people come, particularly an educated workforce, that brings the jobs and the employers and that creates prosperity in the community thriving. And the quote here is the future belongs to those who can effectively create a better place for workers today and tomorrow. This is important to recognize because so many communities are working on this placemaking um, aspect as part of their future economic prosperity. And it's something we'll definitely be addressing in this conference of plans. Some other important issues in the citizen survey, um, just kind of to close with these. These were um, people were asked kind of their level of satisfaction versus their level of importance on a number of different issues. And what this shows is kind of the gap between the level of satisfaction and the level of importance. So in other words, people thought these issues were important but they weren't satisfied with the current condition. So, uh, for example, affordable housing, 83% thought it was important, but only 50% were satisfied with the level of affordable housing right now. That leaves a kind of gap of 33%. Other issues that were important, roads and highways, attracting good jobs and businesses, preserving rural character and protecting the environment. There were certainly other issues that were considered important, but these are the ones that have that highest gap between satisfaction and importance. So the key takeaways here, the, 
the future trends and forces that Jane City County are, are facing is facing in the in this uh, comprehensive plan will put a premium on issues like defining and, and creating a sustainable rate of growth, creating places that grow our economy, protecting our valued community character, creating good livability for all age groups, and providing this good range of options for travel, housing, shopping, and work. These are key forces and issues that this comprehensive plan will deal with, and we want to ask your opinions on these and others. 